Save it stage one, shortest test of the leg. Time, 50 minutes 33.8 was the finish time for Esabeka Lappi on this 26.34 kilometre run through Eco Rent. Yes, like all the other drivers, struggling with grip on the changing conditions. Pushing since the very opening Maybe stage of the day. 15% more clean line. So they are learning, you know, in the front. <laughs> They're going better at front, which suits him. Uh, Craig Green, 15, 51.8, 18 seconds slower than Lappi. That's a big gap. Not a superb run for Breen, unfortunately. 11th quickest. He wants that 208 T16 as quickly as possible. March the 1st, it gets homologated. I don't know what I can do because I'm literally just a passenger from when I switch the car on to go into the stage to, to here, so I can't push anywhere because the minute I say, OK, I'll go for a bit of a push now, I end up and off the road, and not because I'm going around corners too fast. The car just, it just picks itself up and fires it off, so it can happen at any time, so I'm just... I'm really at a lost cause to understand how you can drive hard in these conditions. He gives you uh, Kato, uh, 15 minutes, 43.7, nine seconds quicker than Brian. Up to third in the standings, Brian now fourth, 2.1 seconds behind Kato. Who is finding everything out there. I'm here uh, because uh, I want to uh, find uh, some uh, some grip, some feeling. Uh, this is important for me. Uh, and uh, okay, it's not perfect time, but uh, for me it's okay. We have a fun. We have a so much fun. Believe me. We believe you. Grashin, 15:23.9 on this one in the Fiesta S2000. 9.9 seconds quicker than Lappi and is the fastest. Uh, two stage wins in succession and continues to capitalise on his uh, lower row position in the snow covered stages. So it was a good choice for him. Leading the rally with an advantage of over 30 seconds now on lap. Look at that, so clean. I'm surprised about myself, <laughs> and uh, it was very slippery and very hard conditions to drive like this. I, I remember in the last year, Rally Sweden was like this. Stage four, OptiBet. Their sports bars. Um, 26.34 kilometers in length and uh, just 22 local time in the afternoon. And a uh, second past this uh, stage surface, a bit more stable, uh, the line much cleaner. Uh, the fourth stage of the day before the 50 minute halt of service at uh, Kildiga and Lappi, his time, 5 minutes 24.5, the quickest time again, 19.2 faster than anybody else, or indeed himself in the first pass. Amazing. 11.8 seconds faster than Grishin. Now 18.4 behind Grashin in the standings. Greg Green, his time, 5 minutes, 32.3. Third quickest, better, picking it up. 7.8 seconds slower than Lappi, though. Uh, much more confidence. Fourth overall and 1.1 behind Kejatanovic, known as Kato. Well, the last outing for the S2000-207. Finding his feet again. So Breen to fourth, but look at the gap between himself and Kato in third. Lappi still chasing down Grashin. 18.4 seconds now, the gap between the pair. Difficult day for Breen. Trying to change the setup for these changing conditions from full snow to deep ruts with gravel underneath. You try and guess. We're going to play around with the pitch of the car a little bit, so really, really quite subtle. Uh, we've already, you know, done, done quite a lot of work with dampers and so on and so forth. So uh, we're just going to try and change the actual the way, where the car sits and lower it a little bit more in the front, just to try and have a bit more bite in the in the stud. So it may or may not work. We'll have to wait and see. We will. More serious competition ahead after the break.
Well, a new generation of drivers in Latvia is the European Rally Junior Championship. Well, my name Championship. is Jan Czerny. I'm from Czech Republic and I'm 23 years old. My name is uh, Steve Rockland from uh, Kongsvinger in Norway. Hello, I'm Rista Immonen and I'm from Finland. Bonjour, je m'appelle Stéphane Lefebvre, j'ai 21 ans. Je viens de France, d'une petite ville du Pas-de-Calais qui s'appelle Nolimi. Well, Stefan, 21 years of age, and uh, just one of, indeed, of the 15 young faces from 11 different countries battling for that European Rally Junior Championship title. It's a brand new championship just set up for this year, this season for drivers under the age of 25 in R2 spec cars. So it's going to be a really competitive championship with 15 drivers on the first round here in Latvia. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Latvia, Ireland, the Azores, uh, Ypres, Barham, the Valais, and indeed Corsica. It's going to be tough. Well, the Junior Championship uh, is a very good way to begin an international rally career, in my opinion. Uh, we can see new rallies in new countries that I've never been to before, uh, gain new experience, meet new people, and compete against some of the best drivers in Europe. The prize is uh, that uh, in 2015, who will win? can uh, use uh, the, the car R5 and so it's uh, good for the for the future and for, for the career. We can do a lot of different rallies, no tarmac, no gravel and we will again experience as a driver and um, well, we we'll look forward to get some new experience. That's also really good, the broadcast on Eurosport is really important for young drivers like me to find new sponsors and enough money to do the sport in that way and so I think it's a really good chance. Yeah, it's a big step before high-level ERC and uh, big cars of the WRC in the future, so it's a springboard for young people. Indeed. Good to see them, and a great season ahead for them. A winner of the ERC uh, two-wheel drive in Latvia uh, last year, uh, driving on snowy road, was Risto Imminent. Stage one was six, on stage two, fourth overall. I think we have a little bit problem with the engine, so it's not, it's not uh, so smooth. Uh, lost some uh, horsepower, so and we we make a little bit mistake, so we lost uh, pretty uh, uh, too much time here. Risto finding out how touchy it can be. Stefan Lefebvre in the Peugeot 208. Uh, winner of the Peugeot Rally Cup Junior in France the last couple of years. Good start on stage one, second quickest. Yeah, lost studs on uh, stage two and had difficulty driving the car. He said uh, after 15 k's the car was basically a real handful. We lost around 30 seconds and we're just trying to uh, get a good setup for the next loop, he says. Matty Olsen of Sweden, twice third in stages one and two. During stage two, had a problem with his brakes. Uh, Cause of the problem, he missed uh, a braking point and uh, damaged his car. Also damaged his left rear beam and uh, after a little slide. So, uh, yes, steep learning curve for many. This is Jan Czerny, um, one of the most experienced amongst the young drivers. Three times in the RC two-wheel drive champion, of course, as you well know. Carefully in the first stage, but the second one was really good. We pushed really hard and I really enjoyed it. Overall, it was sixth or something like that, so this is really nice. Well, led from the first stage and carries that lead into the service park. Um, Kevin uh, Van Dyne, gearbox broken and uh, blocked second gear meant he had to abandon. A lot of uh, lost tyre studs out there as well. Big problem for the first stages. Difficult. New talent from Finland is Risto Imminen. Wants uh, to follow up the line of Annan. Um, no more problems with his engine and he won the last two stages of the day and finished second overall after stage six, 7.5 seconds off the lead. Steve Rockland, six new tyres on the second no day. No studs basically. left, it's uh, a shame. He lost uh, consistency all day long, unfortunately, because of that. And Jan Czerny, happy with his result after stage six, he was the leader of the rally in the junior championship. In the middle of stage, we lost completely the spikes and we didn't have a grip. I'm quite happy. <laughs> Should be. This is how they stand. Cherny, Imminent, Rockland, Christensen and Olsen, your top five. And it's tight. Look at that. 41 seconds separating those. Stage five. 26.34 kilometers and uh, six, uh, 4.25 in the afternoon, local time. An awful day so far for Sepp Weigand. 
and um, yeah, I'm not suggesting that's his vehicle. Uh, bad road position, unfortunately. He lost a lot of time uh, cleaning the snow for everybody else. On his second run of the stage, Weigand finally had the line and more grip, and he liked it, and it showed third fastest time, jumping from 18th to 7th overall. It shows what you can do. And the run before this stage was so slow, and now you can go so fast on this stage, so... It's difficult to trust now because it's so, so much more grip. Craig Breen uh, changed the pitch during the previous service, but uh, the change just didn't work too well. And he lost 12.6 seconds, uh, unfortunately, on the fastest man on the stage. Fourth fastest himself, still jumping ahead of Kajetanovic to third overall. Esipeka Lapi benefiting from the cleaned roads, as did Weigand. Uh, road position not that important anymore, it seems. And guess what? Lappi fastest once again with a Skoda Fabia S2000. Vasily Grashin. Yeah, second fastest on the stage. 1.9 seconds behind Lappi. Leads, but by 16.5 seconds over Lappi. Heading for stage six then, that 32.03 kilometer loop through Kilduga. Fire up, pace two. Second pass of the longest stage of the rally in Weigand, second quickest up to fifth in the standings. Things getting better and better for the young German. Today we lost a lot of time with the snow to starting position. Now it works very well. I had now a really good stage. I enjoyed the stage, the grip is there. So, for sure, I try tomorrow to, to be back on, on pace and uh, make some time uh, to, the, to the other concurrents uh, closer. Kejetanovic, Kato, fifth quickest, fourth overall, 43.4 seconds ahead of Weigand, and uh, is here to learn, he says, about the car on the tricky surface. Well, it's an education. Yeah, it was a good day. Uh, I think it was a good job. Now we know uh, much more uh, how we can how we can be fast uh, on snow. Uh, we'll see tomorrow. And fresh, and Great green, third quickest, third overall, 36.7 seconds ahead of uh, Kato. Well, far from being happy with the setup of his car at the end of the first leg. Well, see how he goes tomorrow. It is possible to take mighty leaps. And now it just feels like we have no studs left at the end of the stage. So we had a we had a problem. We we, we changed the setup, and it just I lost all the feeling on the front in the previous stage, and it it just got progressively worse and worse through that one. So, but okay, we're still here and we're still in the fight. So, 17 minutes 47 for Esabeka Lapi, uh, pushing really hard on the stage, really maximum attack, terrific on board. Could he snatch the lead from Grashin? I'm trying to push and I think that's the main thing. <laughs> and tomorrow, keep pushing? Yes, keep pushing. We'll try to do my best. Well, impressive through the day was Lappi. Yes, uh, we'll see how he manages. Well, the crowds <laughs> enjoy the sparks. Now it's quite enjoyable when you have a clean line and, and here is it's a bit wider also, so you can really push and... Ah, this is nice. Sorry about that, uh, cross-checking then. Um, we saw Vasily Grashin, of course, uh, a few moments ago. There he is, 2.6 seconds. Lappi then is our leader. Uh, Craig Green in third place as it stands. So first leg ends with the service park in Leopaya. Um, after 80 kilometers long road section from Kuldiga, will Lappi stay ahead of Grashin? Who will fight back and who's going to take a step forward once they get the stud situation sorted out? You're going to have to tune in and find out tomorrow. Brino Kejetanovic still snapping at the heels. We'll see you tomorrow.